This is a quick video demonstrating the removal of a thermophilic carrier using a braided head strim technique. The technique involves using lots of chloroform to soften the gutta perca around the plastic carrier, then using three head strim files which are intertwined together to engage and remove the carrier. I find this to be a very useful technique. Um, it's pretty straightforward in stubborn cases where the carrier is engaged tightly into the canal and putting up a fight. As you can see, the tooth is pretty heavily restored, um, and on the radiograph on the top right, you can see the root has a conical shape. So we're looking for a long and narrow pulp chamber, and uh, we're going to access through the amalgam. The first thing to keep in mind is that it's very important to uncover the entire canal orifice. Um, I like to make sure that I remove all portions of restorations and undercuts which are blocking uh, direct view of the canals. So in this case, I'm just going to be removing a little bit more structure in between the uh, mesiobuccal and palatal canals. Um, this will allow us to, you know, visualize the floor of the bulb chamber, you know, get a good sense of the anatomy, and just make sure that nothing is covering our canals so we can easily remove the gutta perca. If we pause here for a second, we can get a good sense that we, we were actually visualizing the entire pulp chamber. You can see that the previous dentist treated two canals. The one on the left is the palatal canal and the one towards the right is most likely the mesial buccal. Uh, if you look on the floor of the pulp chamber between the two canals, you can see a developmental groove. Um, and now the question is, there should be a third canal on this tooth. Um, Given the fact that the, the root is so conical, uh, I think that the distal buccal canal will most likely be very close to the mesial buccal. So let's start removing these carriers first and then we'll figure out where the third canal is located. I usually start off by using a heat plugger. So in this case, the system B and turn to about uh, 300 degrees. And I just melt a little bit of the gutta perca coronally. Now, I just find that this allows the uh, chloroform, the retreat solution, to penetrate a little bit further down the canals, and it just kind of kickstarts the process. Once we get lots of retreat solution in there, I start agitating it. So I'm just using an explorer, but I really want to get as much into contact with the gutta perca. You know, give it a couple seconds and just make sure that it's, uh, it's going into the canals as far as possible. Then using a hand file, I'm just going to try to work my way alongside these thermophil carriers. Now sometimes this is easy, like in this case we get lucky, the palatal canal is a little bit larger, so the file actually passes in quite easily. Um, other times it's not so easy, so you know, you struggle a little bit. Um, if, if I usually find that if I can't get in with my uh, hand files, I'll, I'll start with a rotary. So I'll just go straight to a rotary and, and work my way down. But the key is to have as much chloroform in there as possible um, so that there's always liquid in contact with the rubber. So now I'm just confirming that I'm at working length. Uh, I try to get an early estimate of the root canal length just so that I'm not passing through the apex and extruding de debris if possible. So sequentially working the canal a little bit larger. Now I'm working with a, with a 10K file. Um, and, and shortly after this, we'll be switching to rotaries. So here we go. This is, uh, I think this is a 3004 taper rotary file. Um, and I'm just sort of inserting it into the canal along the thermophil. And very quickly, it just pops out. So we got lucky in this case because that carrier was small um, and it was there was room around it. So as soon as the rotary went in, the thermophil carrier came out. So that's great. But the other canal was a lot more challenging. So let's not celebrate. Now we're gonna go to the mesial buckle. We're gonna start off exactly the same way. So lots of liquid, lots of uh, retreat solution in the canal. Start off with small, like a six or not a six, an eight or a 10 file, then switch to rotaries and sort of create a path alongside the carrier. 
Always make sure there's lots of uh, chloroform in there, otherwise things will get stuck and it won't work as expected. So just make that path a little bit larger. What I'm going to try to do is create some space on both sides of the of the um, carrier. So I'm just flicking it with the Explorer, trying to move it so I can get the rotary file on the other side. So you can see I'm just pushing it down. And then we'll use the same rotary on the other side of the uh, thermofill carrier. So after we feel like we've created enough space around the carrier, comes the fun part. So uh, just pick three headstrom files. Um, they don't have to be different sizes, but I, in this case, I picked a 30, a 25, and a 35. And I just try to seat them as apical as possible on opposite sides of the thermofill carrier. So just, you know, put them in, try to get them on opposite sides and, and apical pressure, engage them in a little bit. Once they're in, um, we're going to be twisting them together. So you can twist them together and then grab them with the hemostat and pull them out. And there you go, you can see three headstrom files and a thermofill carrier. So that's it, that was the hard part. Now uh, this is what we have inside the pulp chamber, lots of debris. Of course we need to clean that out. And in this case, we had to look for a distal buccal canal, which happened to be uh, sort of originating from the same orifice as the mesial buccal, just separating a little bit further down. So once the gutta perca was out of the way, the carrier was out of the way, I could look inside there with the microscope and find another pathway. So this is uh, sort of everything's been cleaned out. We're going to go through our irrigation protocols, obturate, and take a final x-ray.